You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. Oh, we're gone? Yeah. I mean, we're going? Wait, you can't... I can smoke in the here. The door's open. Oh. People will walk by. People walk by and do what? Man, you were... Welcome back, Chaley. <laughs> Welcome. Chaley's back. Welcome back, Doug. You just got the back, fucking too. fucking one job Chaley is back, and these are no longer evergreens. Everyone's waiting to hear about... And we'll get to it all, but Chaley's been gone. This is uh, mid-April, and Chaley's been gone since February 24th. 26th, because the 25th, we got so shit-faced and did a bunch of those podcasts. (laughs) (laughs) I was so hungover the next day that I I didn't, I mean, it was on the 24th, and then the 25th is, we were wrecked all day. Uh, And I I put off off leaving another day because of that. But it was fun. I, I, the, the Diarrhea podcast was one of those that we s- set up for Evergreens. And so much shit has happened that I've tweeted about since you've been gone. And while well, we want to hear about this on the podcast, and they probably listen to the podcast going, hey, he just uh, uh, put his dog down. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, that's right. Why, why is he talking about diarrhea? Well, the Diarrhea podcast, we, we taped before you left. And other podcasts and ditch bag podcast, a million podcasts or six. <laughs> yeah, we had Jonathan uh, uh, Valentina was on one. We yeah, had Tom uh, Kanapka. Yeah, Belarus. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael from Belarus. So Chaley just got back. We're, I just we're got still back. not back. I know we're in Tucson. You just got off a plane. You found me at an airport. But this is a uh, yeah. We'll we'll get to all of that stuff eventually. This is just a uh, hey, welcome back, Chaley and Tracy. Uh, and I have a whole fucking load of notes. Are you gonna talk about where you went? Can you talk about that? Well, I just got back from London doing the uh, Carl Pilkington's new series. Oh my god, that was everything I hoped it would be. Carl Pilkington, since I first watched Idiot Abroad years ago, I go, why is he the dupe in this show? He's exactly me. I used to say uh, Inman was our Carl Pilkington. No, I'm our Carl Pilkington. (laughs) It switched on you? You realized when you met him? No interest, no ambitions, no hobbies, but fucking very logical. Uh, So, uh, the the show you did, it's not Another season of Idiot Abroad. Mm-mm. This is a whole different this thing. This is a second season of his series, Sick of It. That oh! Didn't we wa- I thought no. we watched some of those. Well, Afterlife I watched. No, that's no, no, Ricky no. That, that's Gervais. And that, and that one is fantastic. The, I think we were somewhere in a hotel room and we were watching some on demand. Not me. It might not have been you. No, I would have remembered. Yeah, like where they send him... To- no, no, he's a, it's a scripted series. Oh, it's okay. like a, a Louis C.K. show. And uh, the first that we filmed for two days, and the first day of filming, halfway through, once I got a, a level of comfort, because I remember saying this in, uh, don't worry, airplanes go by sometimes. We're at the airport hotel. I, I, I remember in interviews after I did Louis. That I said, I don't want to act, I don't like acting, but since I know this part, if I do any acting, it will only be as this character, Eddie, was the character (laughs) who wants to kill himself. I don't care if it's just a walkthrough on Always Sunny, if I could just walk through and go, hey, I'm Eddie, can I use your bathroom so I can kill myself? And it was a joke, but no one took me up on it, so on this one... (laughs) What, eight years later? I don't know how long ago that was. But I go, hey, would it be all right if uh, you changed my uh, character name from Todd to Eddie and I can just throw in a random, I'm going to kill myself? And I told them the backstory and they go, oh, yeah, they're huge Louis so they fans. Did. Yes. When I get the sides for the next day, I was not, I was Eddie now and not Todd. And I had already thrown in the, I'm going to kill myself. I'm Eddie. I'm, I'm ready to kill myself in, in a, a random line the first day and uh, 
So, yeah, if uh, anyone wants me on a TV show, I'm Eddie, and I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> One thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, two. I, you have to fly Delta, <laughs> yes. and, and I have to be Eddie. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Suicidal. <laughs> All right. Well, let's just let's get caught up on you, Greg Chaley. It's not the Greg Chaley podcast. It's the Doug Stanhope podcast. What have you been doing, Doug? I know, but I, nothing works without you. Oh well, you, you know made how, it. You got you, here. You know how construction's going at the house. Yeah, a little yeah, bit it looks exactly the same as when you <laughs> oh, left. Oh man, <laughs> some of that is uh, is good to hear because uh, I just got another. Uh, oh, now I got a phone call from a live person rather than multiple emails I've been getting. Their t- Home Depot is trying to get me to come down and pick up our vanity and our tub, which we've already had delivered. <laughs> so they're like, hey, uh, yeah, it's about uh, about the vanity and the tub we got here. Uh, are you coming to pick it up? We've, we've ar- they've been delivered. So I don't, I don't know what's going on uh, at the house, but uh, oh, we, we, maybe we can make room for a, a double double vanity and two bathtubs. <laughs> <laughs> like bunk beds, we'll do we'll do bathtubs like bunk beds. <laughs> we just need a little more clearance. The only, <laughs> the only time I've talked to them, evidently one of the guys like s- slammed a, 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 a his car trunk on his face and he missed a week of work. Yeah, and then Bijan, you know the the younger super Shawnee. The, the only time I talked to him is when we had to put Ichabod down, and I uh, we had a, a veterinarian come to the house. Yeah, to I thought do that it. was really sweet. Yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, and then I, I assume they still take care of the body. Like I, don't, I just chuck it in a dumpster. But he was there, and uh, I go, "You think you could?" Because they were digging holes anyway for the foundation for the thing. And I go, how hard is it to dig one of those? <laughs> what, said, like, like you said, yeah. you, you went up to him, the, the laborer at the house, and you said, hey, how hard is it to dig one of them? And you pointed at a hole well, he, he was has digging. A, he has a stripper <laughs> girlfriend. And she's out there. She was digging at the time. So when I get done staring at her ass, I said, how hard is it? He goes, it's really – because I know even Andrew – when they've had to dig there, it's well. The moon soil rock. in our in our area is it's a mining town, and there's been a lot of fill. And there's even if it's the the soil that was there originally, I think it's called caliche or something, and it's just all like fist sized rocks and a lot of like gravel and then clay. Yeah. Well, as I said, I'm staring at a <laughs> stripper trying to do his work. Yeah. Because it's cute. She didn't say anything about caliche oh, or yeah. the makeup <laughs> of the magma or the rock. She she went, ah, oh, it's really hard. I go, ah, oh, it's just because they're, they're going to put Ichabod down in a few hours, so I didn't know if we could dig a grave. And he goes, oh, if I do it down below, it's softer dirt down there by the, the tree. And he had that dug down four feet in an hour. And he's... Beautiful, but I shouldn't have done that. I should have just let the vet take the body and oh, chuck yeah. it in a dumpster because me and Gump put it in one of those those uh, the vacuum sealer bags. Oh, the way, like like you can make your comforter be yeah, real put, small. Yeah, put the, yeah. So you put them in there and you put the vacuum hose on it. No, I didn't put oh. the vacuum hose on it, which <laughs> I should have done that because we put them in that, chucked them in, and then me and Gump and backdoor. Shovel dirt on top of him, and I, but I was in a, a good, not, not a good headspace, but one of those dead headspaces where I feel nothing. And as the dirt started to pile up, I heard the bag pop because I had oh, not vacuumed the air out of it. <laughs> uh, the things you don't think of, <laughs> yeah. But yet, yeah, then a couple days later, where I. I'm not in a good headspace, but I still have vivid memories of shoveling dirt on top of my dogs. But uh, it was actually Val that came up with the idea. Like, I got to wrap them in something. Like, I got to bury them with something. Why? Well, I guess I thought. And then Bingo said, no way can you wrap them in an Arizona Cardinals blanket. Because <laughs> I had an extra one of those. Yeah. And I wasn't going to do it in her team, the Dolphins. And then I saw that. They suffered uh, enough humiliation. 
<laughs> a fan because I'm a Wolverhampton Wolves yes. uh, Wanderers whatever fan. Some fan had sent a giant flag that was on the wall, and that wall's getting knocked out with the construction. And I go, ah, I'll, I'll bury him in that. Wolves, sure. He's, he's wolfish. Yeah. Fat wolf. He's a fan. Fat, tiny wolf. And uh, so I, I tweeted a picture of that. <laughs> of your of, sleeping dog with yes. a Wolverhampton's flag draped. Yeah, and then back to our mic, Over tweeted the a plastic picture bag of him in the fucking ground oh, yeah. with the wolves thing, half, <laughs> half shoveled in dirt. Yeah, because those are the pictures that you reflect on fondly. And uh, the wolves, the the team, the team. Twitter, uh, they followed me, and then the Wolverhampton like Evening Standard or whatever contacted me. They wanted because the wolves are the FA Cup, whatever that is. They had just made the semifinals. Yeah, yeah, they're they're winding down right now, and they wanted to do an interview. You know human interest story or whatever <laughs> oh yeah he's a fan and he buried his dog in a wolves thing and they had just the next day they had made this miraculous comeback victory over man city yeah, yeah. uh and i'm like oh wow that's yeah uh, ichabod <laughs> he's buried in a wolves thing it's a little less atheist is the bit you'll yeah. hear it one day uh and they wanted to do a, a, a story. A but human go, interest story. Yeah, but yeah. then they're playing Watford on Sunday. We'll My do team. it afterwards. My Watford. Fuck your Watford. I'll give you Watford. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'll definitely do that interview. Like, uh, it's silly. It's a coincidence, but it's fun coincidence. And then they lost to Watford. And then the guy emailed me back. He goes, yeah, no one's really in the mood for your dog story. But uh, maybe one day we'll have a... <laughs> it was his dog story. It's not uh, your yeah. dog story. They had the angle. Chaley's. Tracy's here. In February, you left. Well, you had to go to Seattle and... I don't know which way to go with all this. I have so many fucking notes from six weeks of shit. Yeah, I didn't. I was working. I didn't take notes. I mean, I've got memories from. Uh, We're not going to get into Alaska till yeah, Chad's that's, here. Yeah, that's the whole thing. I haven't uh, seen him since he hurriedly grabbed his gear at like three in the morning <laughs> with Andy. And we were already back at the at the Airbnb, and they, right, they, we'll, they, we'll, I'm we'll, just saying, it's like I don't he, he, the the frantic look. I've never seen that on Chad's face. They're like he knows he's gonna forget something, but he's got to get out of there because he's got to catch his flight. And yeah, uh, because he had he had a, a court date the next day for his uh, his daughter, not daughter. Yeah. So it was imp it was important that he got out of there. You but have he was fucking wrecked. no idea how lost we are without you. Oh, thank you. I don't know if that's a thank you kind I don't, of... I don't, I don't know what to say. Yeah, it's just uh, absolute... Uh, we're in, in oblivion without the Chaley's there. I'm pretty sure it's more about a, a solid bartender. It's good no, to have a solid really bartender. There's no reason to have a bartender. Like, there's no sports anymore. I, uh, Carl Pilkington... God damn it. I can't fucking say enough about how much I fucking love this guy. <laughs> enough of the like, Shaley's. <laughs> like, I, I, don't, I don't really talk to anybody. And I go, well, I don't talk to anyone either. We just put on sports. And if there's someone there I don't have anything to say to, I pretend I'm into the sports that are on TV. It's what we do. So, yeah, well, the, the fun house is nothing there. I, I remember... A week into you being gone, Chad was there and Gump was there, and we're like, God damn it, we want a podcast so badly. We did open mic there. Oh, yeah, I heard you did an open, open mic. Open, yeah. Uh, but Shawnee, of course, over Shawnee'd the whole deal. He brought in <laughs> equipment like you two is doing a stadium event. And I'm like, ah, fuck. Because we I would have, I would have kept doing open mic, you know, a couple times a week. 
but uh, like Shawnee was the only guy I knew who could set up sound and I, no, you, this is so unnecessary. I don't want to bother you, <laughs> you with you this. Can, you really don't even need a microphone. That is, the room is. Yeah, he yeah. brought in a mixing board. Yeah, that's I like. I, I, I go. Well, we can just go to Sierra Vista and Were you buy recording? just a small. No, oh no, it's just for fun. Yeah, you could just buy one of the small amp and a. Well, I had it there on the wall, but since we uh, moved a lot of stuff out of there, I took it down because. Uh, well, I just I took it down and put it downstairs because we weren't using it. Well, we had those. And then the week I leave, you decide to use it. <laughs> it worked good. Yeah. It, it, it was it was great. We can do that anytime we want to. Well, Becker's got chuckleheads open now. They yeah, have yeah. open mic. I don't know if they have a schedule. I've been gone. Is that weekly, Trace, the open mic at Chuckleheads? I think Tuesdays. I want to go to break, but I don't think we have a sponsor except for Muddy Bears. I brought Muddy Bears to, I saw that to, to the set. Uh, I, 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 I have to look so much shit up. So let's let's take a break. Yeah, we have to. And uh, this is this is just a starter podcast. And then uh, as soon as we get home tomorrow, we'll we'll we'll, we'll burrow into all this shit. We're still not home. My notes start <laughs> at when I left this, not this hotel, the one across the street going here. We got going to UK. To the UK. Okay. But then on the next page is like, what the fuck happened in the six weeks you were gone? <laughs> Ichabod, open mic. Oh, I did, did I do that crazy flight to Africa while you were still here? Or was uh, that no, we, we had left. All right. Yeah, there's no good story there. That's odd. The fucking Bisbee cops. Oh, my oh. God. Val's here. She can help chime in. Let's take a break. <laughs> I don't even know about that one. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's terrifying. I was going to say, we're still not home, and we're at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's, let's take a break. Please hold. All right, road dates. Vegas sold out. 24th and the 25th. May 24, 25, without ever... We didn't even promote those. That's the filming... All right. (laughs) I fucked up. I got this special to the place where I could have filmed it immediately last July and decided to quit comedy for a minute. And, uh... I, uh, instead of taping it right then, now, nine months later, I'm going out for a month to relearn the material to get the special right. I know the material. I got to get it right. So starting April 25th in Cincinnati, I'm doing Cincinnati at Go Bananas. It's the 25th through the 27th, and those yeah. tickets are still available. Yeah, and then May, I'm doing two weeks of random like improv dates. Well, uh, some of those are already sold out. Irvine and San Jose, the 7th and 8th of May, they're those sold are sold out. out. But if you if you go to the DougStandup.com uh, tour dates, and it says sold out, Always check with the venue because they might be holding some tickets. Yeah, well, that, that's a this a weird fucking thing that Hennigan does. He'll get a portion of them brown paper tickets, uh, so you don't have to pay the exorbitant <laughs> fees. That, anyway, so check with the venue. May sixth is Ontario Improv. That's still uh, plenty of tickets for that. Not plenty, you know what I mean. But uh, May fourteenth, Oxnard at Levity Live. Yeah, have you ever done that there? Yeah. Okay. I have. And then the fifteenth at Brea Improv, and then May twentieth. Uh, actually, you're doing a couple dates at Minneapolis House of Comedy. Yeah. But May 20th. Yeah, uh, the Mall of America. I'm back. <laughs> May what 20th is goes open. goes up must <laughs> come down. I'm back at Knuckleheads. No, it's House of Comedy. <laughs> I know, but it's the same place is it? as Knuckleheads oh. was in 1994. Uh, well, and the, I'm looking forward to that. 21st, 22nd are already sold out. May we're 20th here, is we're available. We're queer and we have spears. <laughs> Only Becker would get that joke. <laughs> Mall of America. Oh, God. Those those were the days. And you knew what you were. So, yes, I'm doing all these dates. But if you're on the mailing list, then uh, and uh, you'd be the first to know. We sold out a lot of these dates just on the mailing list. Never going public, yeah. Yep. 
Uh, and then I taped that shit in Vegas in May, and then start from scratch. Yeah, so right right away, you're going to be putting more uh, dates up after... Dougstandup.com. Just yeah. go fucking get on the mailing list. It's you not like th- I'm sending you a lot of spam. <laughs> you got this far. <laughs> you, you, you figured out how to work your machine to listen to us. <laughs> Just get on the fucking <laughs> mailing list. All right, where were we? I, I, I'll get to the Bisbee cops, but uh, the open mic, I want to say... In the fun house. We've never had a bad show in the fun house. Kenny did. Kenny oh, I was going to say. Night. Yeah, say, he ate a Kenny, bunch of shit. Kenny, Kenny's had a, a bunch yeah. of times where things didn't go right. <laughs> oh, and I want to thank you, everyone who sent uh, Derek money for his cataract surgery. Thank you for that. <clears throat> we, we don't throw out a lot of GoFundMe shit much, but. So what happened? He had he needed cataract surgery. He's going as much blind. weed as that guy smokes. He got cataracts. No, that's glaucoma. Oh, <laughs> potato, potato. <laughs> but yeah, he's, I'm gonna go blind in six months. Um, that's not my fucking problem. Stop touching yourself. <laughs> uh, so yeah, a, a lot of people kicked in for that. That's so good. Thanks. He got one eye done, and he's good with one eye. Wait, wait hold on. Really? What? I, I don't know the fucking details, Chaley. He didn't get enough money, so he just goes, let's just, just no, do the one. No, you have to do one at a time. Well, you, I know that. You Did want he, he one blew, eye you can he see. He blew the rest of the money on weed. No, no, no. He hasn't got enough money for the second oh, eye, but right. that's on him. I got him one eye, fuck him. <laughs> all right, well, you you're, you don't have a mic, so shut up and no one knows lucre. Uh, the fucking open mic was so... So much fun. We've never had a bad show in the fun house, and we have to do that all so the time. So who was on it? Well, I was Jason Fury went up and did great with what? three hours notice. I didn't even know he wanted to do open mic. Wait, you guys, you needed to stretch? You needed to fill time? I was, <laughs> was it, this, it was my was this birthday. Broadcast I didn't on want TV? a birthday party, but we had been going up to Tucson to do open mic. Yeah. And I do two nights of open mic, and it's high season in Tucson, so I'm spending like four hundred dollars on hotels, yeah. and then you know bar tabs and fucking over tipping like I do when I suck at open mic to, to try to make it all okay. Uh, <laughs> but I hope he doesn't get good material. Floyd, He'll stop tipping. Floyd killed. Floyd's always good. Yeah. Yeah, but he, he Phil killed. Phil Devoid. Yeah, that was his old <laughs> stage name. Uh, Gump got sick all of a sudden. He yeah. couldn't do it. So at the end, we sent Jason Fury and Chad Shank. Chad Shank hosted the thing. Yeah. Fucking, he's going to be doing stand up before you know it. Uh, so Jason Fury and Chad Shank went and yanked strong arm Gump him. out of bed by his shoulders and drug him onto the stage. You're on next. <laughs> <laughs> And he had a couple bits. He did all right. Everyone did great except for Kenny, who not only died. You've seen Kenny die, whether it's rapping or stand-up. But this was no one was heckling him. It was stone oh. silence to the point he had to dress, address it. But no one's even heckling me. I'm really dying up here. And no one said a fucking word. It was great. <laughs> Was he okay afterwards? You know, you know who's doing open mic now? Our uh, I killed my mother guy in uh, in the mental facility. Yeah, out on the East Coast, he's running an open mic now. The- yeah, and he said it. Wait, in the facility? Updates. In the facility, <laughs> he's running fucking open mic now. I just picture a seven foot Indian going up there. <laughs> <laughs> He told me he had to he had to uh, take out gangster rap because it was too divisive. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, he's got some great storytellers. He's got great stories. I ordered the book because I I think of it all the time. There was a children's book that I remember as a kid called "Nothing Ever Happens on My Block," and it's this kid who's sitting on the street corner, staring towards the viewer the reader and in the background all this crazy shit's happening parachutes are dropping in houses are on fire yeah and he's just bitching that another nothing ever happens on his block because he's faced the other way yeah and i thought about that and then 
it was one of those days in the fun house where I'm just sitting there going, my life is fucking dull. I do nothing. And then I get an email from our kid. East the, Coast. Not guilty by reason of insanity. Hey, here's how the open mic, because we went out, we visited him out there. We went to the facility. Yeah, yeah. Hung out with him. He's like, oh, I'm like, oh, nothing ever happens on my blog. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we do shit. We go inspire people. <laughs> uh, so I, I actually ordered that book <laughs> online. Uh, I see him going to the nurses. Look, we've got to flip this room. i got a nine o'clock show coming in. <laughs> <laughs> God, he's so – it's so inspiring. that Yeah, he's doing fucking open mic in a fucking criminally insane unit in a state hospital. And it's working. And it's helping people. Anyway, I'll get to the Bisbee cops. One more thing. <laughs> Joby, while I was over there doing the uh, – Carl Pilkington show in the UK, which you're just yeah, back from. Had the the weekend off between the Friday Monday tapings. Hack and Joby came down, and uh, Joby says he's doing great. He's gone from thinking of killing himself, uh, killing himself thirty times a day, down to about five. <laughs> Is he sleeping more? <laughs> uh, he's drinking a a a, a, a third less. And and hack because they're living together is drinking four times as much. Yeah. So they're meeting in the middle. But Joby needs smokes. So here's the get oh, your wow. pen. Fucking cigarettes cost like seventeen dollars a pack over there. So if he's you, and he's over there for at least another two months, right? Uh he he was hoping for a year, maybe oh. six months. But here's the address to send Joe Whitlock. Cigarettes is. I'll cut this part out. 105 High Street. That's easy enough. 105 High Street, Riddings, like good Riddings, Derbyshire. What? He'll smoke whatever yeah. you send him. She, she wrote say. down his brand. <laughs> Derbyshire DE5543 S? J? What? No. <laughs> All right. No, it's DE554BJ. BJ. Yes. 4BJ. Yeah. That's 105 <laughs> High Street, Riddings, Derbyshire. D E five five four B J. It'll be in the show notes, so if you have trouble, yeah, deciphering, yeah, send Doug's. cigarettes that way. Yeah, Winston yeah. lights are always good. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how to get into the story. I don't know I don't, about I th- it. It might have been open mic night late, but Val was there, and uh, well, your birthday party. I I remember seeing on the cameras. You guys, that was you, open. You mic had night. a lot of people there, and you were nowhere. And it was about 10 o'clock at night. That was after open mic night. Yeah. That's probably when it was then. Because Val and I went to go watch something on... uh, Oh, I remember. It was was Prohibition, Ken Burns, which you can watch over and over again. Great fucking Netflix. So we're watching Netflix, and I took an edible, which I don't generally do. Unless I know I'm gonna go to bed, which I did. When you, I have to ask you: uh, when you do the edible, do you also do one of the sleepers, or you just purely do the edible? No, to go instead to sleep? of a sleep. Okay, yeah. So I'm watching the show, and it's yeah, roughly ten o'clock, around eleven thirty. I'm out. I'm done. I'm gone. Yeah. And Val wakes me up in a panic, going. There's someone at the door. I don't know if she said it was the Bisbee police. She goes, someone's at the door. And we had an issue where there's cause for fucking panic when someone's... No one that knows us knocks at the fucking door. If you know how to get in, you get in. And then you just come in. If you don't, if you're fucking knocking 
And then she's waking me up out of an edible, so I'm paranoid. Anyway, there's someone at the door. Someone's being polite. Wake up. <laughs> it's fucking scary. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's unnerving. Yeah. So I went, who is it? Bisbee police. And I'm still not convinced because we had a situation. And uh, I, start, I still have my eye mask. Now is on top of my head like Snoopy aviator glasses. <laughs> And she goes, wait, no. And she looks out the window, verifies it is police, and opens the wait, door. Wait, they're at the door inside the, the compound? front door. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, uh, Still in bed. Sure. And I'm like, what? Uh, and they go, is uh, Jason so-and-so here? And I go, ah? Uh, ah? Uh. And uh, it's like hack oddity or or backdoor like i'm trying to think is there someone that might be that name yeah. that we only know by a nickname and i go well, i don't uh, you talking about scream up you talking about scream up <laughs> is he out i think scream up's in are you locked up <laughs> and i'm just so confused and high that i go uh, uh, describe him and you, the, oh, wait, the, you the, asked, the, on the other side of a door, you asked to. No, no, they're, oh, they're okay, all right. and they know who I am, so yeah, they're sure. being very polite. Yeah, yeah. We're sorry to disturb you, Mister Stanhope, but uh, and I go, I don't know. You know, you I, have no pants on, sir. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can conduct this interview now, but if you want to put on some shorts or maybe some PJ bottoms, <laughs> <laughs> if you can lose the erection, <laughs> pretty good. I heard you turn fifty-two. Pretty good. <laughs> Keep I it, say, sir. Keep it. The, the, there's not going to be many of those left. <laughs> Just let let it go. The <laughs> pacing. When I said like, what does he look like, or however I said it, the pacing could not have been more comedy timed. Where they said he's older, he's probably like sixty, and the whole time I'm looking confused, bald head, huh? Where's a leather jacket? Mm. Likes to wear a, a, a wallet with a chain. Uh, rides a unicycle. And I went, all right, no. <laughs> rides a unicycle? <laughs> no, was, I can guarantee you this is Was not John so Cleese <laughs> the policeman in this skit? Was this part of the open mic? <laughs> It was like a like a like, ministry you know, of funny. It's walks. like one of those, yeah. It's like one of those uh, those plays where like the audience is on stage. <laughs> I was so scared and confused, but when he got to rides, rides a, a unicycle, unicycle. So the next morning, when I have a vague memory of this, I wake up. I think, oh, Castle Rock, Kenny, Cold Cut, Kenny. That's the guy I would ask about this Jason so and so. Yeah. And uh, I go, Do you know a guy with this name? He goes. Oh yeah, yeah, I know that guy. Yeah, he, yeah, he's a he lives over in s wherever. Yeah, he's a clown. And I go, do you mean like a unicycle clown, or he's like a clown as a like person? a goofy dude? Yeah, he goes, no, he's a real clown. I go, all right, that explains the unicycle <laughs> part. But we still have no idea why anyone would report him being at my house. They're well, on the well, lookout. Clearly, for does this. you guys are entertainers. Yeah, he figured. He figured you knew him, as you know all they're always hung out. At they the all fun know house. each other. Well, yeah, <laughs> Funhouse too. <laughs> they they checked the circus tent. <laughs> at first, I thought Derek's brother because they're. I don't know if you're following that on Facebook. Why would we? Well, because you guys are on Facebook. No, but yeah, Derek's Derek's brother and is a clown and Derek. No, they're in repairs a unicycles. <laughs> No, uh, restraining order. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, all sorts of shit going down oh, between man. Derek and his brother. Uh, it, it's some silly shit I don't care about, but... Well, then where does Derek live now? Well, Derek was living out of his car, but then... I don't know, I heard... The, du the duster? Listen, we're going to catch all of you listeners up on all <laughs> you of this. You got to catch me up. <laughs> I don't even the know. The duster. How about the fucking, the, the new, uh, what is it? Uh, Crown Vic. I went to the goddamn police auction, oh, you motherfucker. Oh. There we go. I, w I yeah. wonder how that was going to turn yeah, out. Yeah, I get a, I, I get a 94 Crown Vic. 
with 55,000 original miles, 54,910 uh, uh, and uh, for 900 bucks, and then I drove it to uh, Safeway and back, and it still had 55,900. <laughs> like, oh, this odometer doesn't work at all, <laughs> nor does the power window <laughs> no. <laughs> that is now down. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so yeah, I gotta get that registered when I get back. Oh, wow. Uh, we got so much to tell you so, about. So, hold on. So, what happened with, with the unicycle? I don't know. They left. I said, I don't know anyone like that. And they left. And I still have no idea why someone I don't know would be reported to be at my house to have the cops over there trying to. Yeah. And I've been gone. I've been in London. That's uh, that's yeah, that's got me thinking. Like, what did the what did the clown do <laughs> that made them like, look, we we need a dragnet. It was an off <laughs> I, night. I, look, it was not a. Uh, look. Uh, Chief, I got a hunch. It was. There's another entertainer in town. <laughs> There's a good chance he might know where our perp is. <laughs> and they go knock on your door at, at 1030 at night to try and find a clown. Just wait. He's going to show up, right? It's a unicycle. How many more unicycles are there in town? And yeah, this is why we need to register unicycle owners. <laughs> oh, I have so <laughs> they, need, they need GPSs on those things so we can find out where they are at all times. All right. Mary Noodles, Isis. We're going to have so many fucking... As That's for what's coming up? We get home. Chad gets home. I have a, a new best friend I met for 15 minutes. Val is going to go probably be her girlfriend. Uh, God damn it. My notes start at when I left here. When you the left for the UK. Yeah. The street, yes. Well, I know Chad's got plenty of uh, recollections. Guy. We were in Anchorage with Brett Erickson, Carrie Mitchell... Andy Andrist and Chad Shank and Tracy and I, and we were basically at Coots the whole time. Yeah, this uh, I, I'm looking at my notes. There's way too much to get into. Let's just get home. Thank you guys for waiting us out. Uh, and, uh yeah, we'll get all, uh, all of this next week. We'll have a full fucking thing. Do you know what the most stole? <laughs> no, no, I'll, what? I'll just wait. <laughs> I'm just getting into the beginning. I was here leaving for the UK and uh, the other hotel across the street. And I was sitting there listening to a fucking dullard with his 89-year-old mother. And there was a nice lady on the corner of the bar. In the bar. Yeah. And he bought her a drink. He struck up conversation. Uh, and you don't buy the drink, you buy their time. I think I went over this in my last book. Uh, when someone wants to buy you a drink, they don't think you're thirsty. They want to yeah. buy your fuck. So she had to listen to this guy go on and on. Uh, and it turns out she's, uh, she wants to get into, uh, uh, Homeland Security, but right now she does retail security management and he's just she got a few words in edgewise but it always came back to oh yeah my my life and my mother here and she's tried to commit suicide <laughs> and then his problems with fucking thickening of the blood and fucking anticoagulants that he has to take but at some point she I, you know how you get four drinks in and you go, I'm fun to fucking control this. I'd love to hear more about you. Yeah, I've heard all your story. You've been going on and on. And so what do you do now? And she's, that's when she said she does retail security and for, uh, uh, makeup companies. Yeah. And I go, I think makeup, that's probably one of the most stolen. Products. I've never there thought is. of that, but yeah, that's all. Probably, of, yeah, I don't know. Is, is Tracy? Were you a klepto? Because I all right. Is was makeup one of the things you stole the most? Yeah, yeah. Makeup, nail polish, still does. I find it all the time. No receipts. You, it's fucking crazy. It's a problem. No, I, it's a problem. Seriously, most of the chicks I know that are fucking they steal makeup, and I go, oh, that must be. She goes, no. You know the number one thing most stolen shoes. Retail of any kind, I wouldn't have guessed it. Meat. What? 
Yeah. Steaks. Meat. Like food. Yeah. Food King. Food King. Animal House. Yeah, yeah. Stuffing it down their pants. Jane's Addiction. Ben caught stealing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but then he went into his mother he went trying back. to kill he's, herself. She's telling, it, she's telling you this great little story, and then he keeps trying to edge in with this shoehorn in his mom? No, she left. Oh, okay. And then I got... But then I'm just repeating everything he said to her. Well, you know what? It's not like I'm pro-Trump, but uh, the way I looked at it is like the... Uh, 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 it's a choice between voting for a rattlesnake or a cobra. And, <laughs> but it, then he's trying to repeat the hour of conversation I've listened to him bloviate at her and every time he tries to say it again, I go, yeah, I know, the rattlesnake, the cobra. <laughs> and, and he's just this fucking hangdog face. But she starts talking to me because he's talking about his 89-year-old mother who had just a month before tried to commit suicide. And he's talking like she's not there. And the beautiful part is when she had walked in, I have a bit that you'll hear if you come on the road or if you saw me a year the ageism bitch. She is the epitome of the most grotesque, like, uh, humping in on a walker, barely alive. And he's talking about her to that lady like she's not there. Yeah. Yeah, and she's like this, and she tried to commit suicide a month ago, <laughs> and she's a bit, 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 and she's 89, to the point where I go, maybe he's talking about a different woman, because he wouldn't be that rude to talk about his mother like that. Sitting right next to her. And then once the lady he's talking to left, and I'm talking to him, I start talking to the mother who's right beside me. Oh, wait, that was you that tried to commit suicide? And, and I had the fucking best conversation <laughs> with her. And, of course, I had to tell her about my mother and how did you try to kill yourself. And, like, she's just done. Wait, and you then asked I, her how she tried to kill herself? Oh, she, I had her fucking laughing. And she goes, I haven't laughed in so long. And she was Dutch and she's fucking full of spirit. And this Fucking dullard. I, I want to I want to use a, a local reference of someone who represents the son that we know in Bisbee, but just this fucking lummoxy, it's all about me. And I got her so fucking happy, and we had such a great time. Did I you was, end up killing the you and her for like a murder pact? <laughs> killed killed the no, son? No, no, but I was that's one of those things where Oh, you know what? You do a great thing with stand-up comedy because you, you make people laugh when they need to. No. When I do stand-up comedy, you have to pay like fucking 50 bucks or something to see it. When I can make that old woman laugh yeah. who has this stooge fucking henchman for his son that doesn't give a fuck about you and you go, oh, I haven't laughed like this in so long. Yeah, that's when comedy counts. And it was a fucking great great night and uh yes and i'm smiling still i'm two for two for getting laughs at uh awake <laughs> my dad and my mom yeah i wrote i wrote things to to you know go up there and say and you're shaking because all these people look at it but i got two laughs that's all i wanted just one laugh <laughs> one each that's it i'm oh, out <laughs> that's all that matters yeah I sold out Carnegie. Fuck you. I made a fucking 89 year old woman. Uh, yes. I made a room full of Catholics laugh. She said at one point she tried to chew through her wrist. Oh my God. Yeah, but she was in a good mood. No, said that's, that's the best thing. Is that's, a, that's part of the problem with the, the horrible, horrible relationship that I was in for years. It just was a, a real fucking wreck on me. I can laugh at it now. And that's the thing is like, I don't know that she can because we're not friends. We don't talk. There's, there's no communication. It's like, I can laugh at it now and I can, I can look back on that and I go, that was fucked up. And then this happened. I mean, I was even showing pictures of her on the bar at Coots to Chad. I go, that's the crazy one. And we were laughing about it. And that's the thing is if you, you got her laughing about trying to chew through her own wrists, <laughs> like that guy who, chew, but, who chopped his own arm off up in the, up in the mountains. I mean, that's but fucking also insane. You get to, uh, uh, emasculate's not the right word where, cause when he tried to start fucking 
talking over her. Turn it back into him. Yeah. I, I go, yeah, no, I already heard. And I just kept repeating an hour's worth of conversation. Like no one was listening to him. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, everyone who could hear would be listening to you. So I kept shutting him down and I just watched his face drift into his palms <laughs> where he had nothing to say. And then I got her wrapped attention and then we had a beautiful conversation while he was fucking cuckolded and, and masturbating limply in the fucking corner and had nothing to add. It was we, fucking great. We were, we were at uh, my my sister's house back Midwest. And, uh, I mean, there... Who was it? It was uh, her, my sister's uh, mother-in-law and father-in-law are there. And he, the father-in-law starts starts talking, telling some stories. And my my sister's husband is like, yeah, yeah, whatever, Pop, whatever. And he kept shutting him down, right? And then we get him, my brother and I get him alone. And we're sitting there at a table. And he starts telling these stories. And it's like, you you drove the helicopter for Daryl Gates during the Rodney King? And he's telling these stories. We're like, wait, wait hold on a second. And then, like, the, the mom, she, uh, she was, great. she had, she did school lunches for all of LA school district. And she had all these fucking, like, well, okay, hold on now. Taco day. What really went down? Well, like, the, like, and we, we had the best time talking to him. And if we would have sat at that table with the son, he would have shut everything down. He would have been talking about like, so like uh, cornbread, like you like it with corn in there or, and this guy, he, he never gets to talk and we had the best time talking to him. And it was, it was one of those things where like sometimes those people that are just like, get, they're so used to getting shut down that they don't even try. And then t until you somehow break the seal or cock block the fucking, uh, the, the sun. Yeah. Chaley, it's so nice to have the trailies home. Things will work perfectly now. We got a lot to do. You got two dates of Chuckleheads coming up? Yep. And then we've got, uh, well, you're going to Ohio for a couple of days, and then you're getting back in the saddle, and then you got all your dates, yep. and then we got Vegas, and plenty more after that. I yes. think. I don't know. I'm on the I mailing list. I, I just find out when everyone else does. I, <laughs> hey, JC, I look. Know. There's, a, there's a taping, I guess, in we Vegas. We might have a new book. <laughs> it's not. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah, we might. All right. We do, but we don't have. Good tease. Yeah, 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 yeah. Audible.com. Click. Did you hang up? No, I just said click. All right. <laughs> hey, thank you guys for. Uh, Waiting through all the uh, evergreens, and we're back. And uh, oh my God, next week, tomorrow for tomorrow. us, but next week for you. I can't wait to hear fucking Chad's versions. Oh, the Andy, just the Andy story yeah. you told me in Alaska. <laughs> And that was just, I just called in quickly, and you just told me what was happening right then. <laughs> what was with happening you in and front Andy of Andy yeah. and Chad and Tracy. <laughs> All right. We love you. Hopefully, we'll have a sponsor next week. Maybe Muddy Bears will finally fucking come around and go, hey, you, you've gone over and above your fucking call of duty. Yeah, Muddy Bears. How about us? Click. I did hang up this time.